Hi, everyone, and welcome to Outside the Ropes. I'm Tom Hannafin, and I'm joined by, I'm going to do it this time, Trinity! Trinity! I've been waiting to say that, and now we have <laughs> Unity here on Unity. Outside the Ropes. I've been waiting years to do that. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Coming up this Saturday, that is July 15th in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, at the St. Clair College Sportsplex. It's our Slammiversary, our 21st annual anniversary pay-per-view event. It'll be live and on pay-per-view on Fight TV as well and DAZN internationally. That night, Trinity will challenge Deanna Perrazzo for the Knockouts World Championship in a first time ever matchup. How are you feeling? This is a really big deal. Uh, it's such a big deal, but I feel that my journey and everything that's happened to me through my career, through my experience, everything has brought me to this moment and I feel excited about it. Um, I feel prepared for it mentally. And I think that's one of the major factors in a championship match is like your mind gotta be there. You know, your energy, your spirit gotta be there and, uh, and I'm there and I'm super pumped and excited for this opportunity, not just to, to prove myself to myself, but also prove to Deanna, who I think is one of the best champions we've ever seen here, I can go toe to toe with her. I know you were aware of Deanna when you were in WWE, but then when you show up here in Impact, she's one of the first people that you mentioned that night in Chicago. And sure enough, she comes out. Some barbs were exchanged. When you step in the ring with the virtuosa Deanna Perrazzo, that's not something you can just walk out on. When you step in the ring with me, you're gonna wish you got fired again. And you two haven't exactly seen eye to eye in this lead up to Slammiversary. I, I thought for certain, especially you had a title defense in Australia, it seemed like you were being very protective of her. Her not so protective of you, which you know has led to some of the tension heading into this matchup. But when it comes to Deanna individually, what's been your evaluation of her now that you've gotten to see her up close? First of all, her, her in-ring ability. I think she's a, a very unique performer because not only is she strong and she can high fly when she wants, she's one of the best technical wrestlers that I've ever seen. And I'm very impressed by that. So it's gonna be a challenge for me to see how I perform and compete against someone of her wrestling style and diversity. I have never faced anyone like Deanna before. So I think this match will tell me everything that I need to know, reassure me, which is what I need here in Impact and also the proof to the knockouts that I belong here. You absolutely belong here. And in terms of building your confidence, it's been a roller coaster for you over the last few years. It's well Ooh. documented. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot that the outside world understands that there's certain things that are just for you and just for your, your close personal friends, family. The thing that jumps out to me about your arrival here in Impact, you didn't need to be here. You chose to be here. And there are select free agents in the history of pro wrestling that have elected to come to this company. I think back on Booker T. I think back on Christian Cage. I've been calling this you versus Deanna at Slammiversary, one of the most important matches in the history of Impact Wrestling. Not just knockouts for the entirety of the company, but the thing that's been fascinating to me is that you use the word reassurance. I don't believe anybody need reassurance that you are a star. You legitimately are a star and that every single metric that Impact Wrestling has, from merchandise to viewership to attendance, has gone up since you've arrived here. For you, building your confidence back up, what does that process look like? In the beginning, very hard and very scary, um, but I know that this is where I need to be and where I'm supposed to be right now. Impact has just literally like impacted my life in only positive ways and supportive ways, and that's, that's so much of what I was missing and what what I needed. And so to be here and to feel like I'm, I'm thriving and growing and glowing while I'm growing, <laughs> I 
that's all like I needed and wanted. And it, it feels so good to be in this space. And I can't say enough like how happy I am to, to be here and that I just took that leap of faith and completely started new in a way. It has been brand new for you in that your support system has changed dramatically. You yeah. aren't able to see your husband, John, on a regular basis in the workplace. And I think something that was really fun was when you debuted in Chicago, not many people knew about it in the moment, but after the fact, it came out that Mercedes Monet, uh, Serona Snuka as well, who's both wonderful people, were backstage supporting you. I just finished my first match. Oh, <laughs> what is that new support system in life for you? Those two not new, but the new support system you have here at Impact as well. It's so easy to get, get caught up into what we read online, right? Or to develop this perspective because you think that's what it seems like. Even though that's not what it is, it seems like sometimes that that is the perception of you. And to be here in real time, in reality, and with the fans and see the people and know like, no, this, this is real. This, I am supported, um, that, that was a very eye-opening for me and reassuring. And I think I, I am my biggest critic. You know, we all are, I feel like, when being in these entertainment spaces, and sometimes we are just really hard on ourselves. So to be in a space where I'm reassured and, and validated that, well, you, you good, sis. Like, <laughs> you good. Like, oh, you're you, good. We, we like you. We're happy you're here. We're happy to have you. Like that's been everything and it is definitely helping me with, you know, my, my confidence in this this world of wrestling and in my career and where I am now. Especially, uh, you're, you're good with the fans here in Impact Wrestling. It, it's so cool to see how the fans, uh, the glow sticks every single yeah. time you come out. It's just this whole environment that maybe was never really cultivated before in your career. How has the response from the fans changed from your perspective? It just feels a lot more close and intimate now. I just feel like I'm, I'm feeling everything now and I can see everything now and I can see the faces and I, I like that. The fans really, I feed off of their energy and to be an impact, to, to visually, like literally be able to look out and, and see, you know, that exchange of energy, it's, it's everything. It's very, very intimate. Um, the fans also, this is something you and I were talking about, the fans have gotten to see a new side of you and that they're embracing Trinity, but they're also embracing uh, who you are as a performer in the ring. Um, your submission you've been using, Starstruck. I remember once upon a time in a land far, far away in your hometown of Orlando in front of the entire world, you won a championship on one of the biggest stages humanly possible <laughs> with that move. Yeah. And somehow people forgot about it. So for me to see you put that into play in your first win against Kylan King. I can't tell you how excited I was, but how cool was it for you to be like, you know what, I'm going to do something relatively different. Yeah, just very cool and, and happy to kind of be able to try different things and experiment with different ideas and creativity and moves. And then also to kind of be able to go back and, and recall certain things that have happened in my career and previously that maybe this this group doesn't know about or people don't remember or haven't seen. I think it's it's very fun and, and very cool. And that submission I've, I've always liked and always loved, but for some reason could never get it established the way I want. That's crazy to remember that, but it's such a meaningful moment and uh, to be using it now, like I'm, I'm super hyped about it and want to continue to evolve with it and see as many um, cool ways I can get into it and mess people up with it as possible. I'm a nerd, that's why I remember it. Uh, one thing that's been a first for you, something new for you, you wrestled Jay Vidal recently. You've had your issues with Giselle Shaw and she's fun to deal with, as we all know. But you never got the chance to wrestle a man one-on-one. -on -one. It's just the way WWE did things. But this is something completely different for you. And you're exploring these new situations all the time. What was that experience like? Super cool. <laughs> Super cool, and it's just it's it's just exciting to experience and do something that I've never really got to, and so to be able to do that in front of the, the live audience, which was a, a first for me, you have to step up and, and show them like, 
Yeah, I love that. So. <laughs> it's, it's been a challenge and it's something, that's why you're here. You've embraced every last part of it. I love challenges. That's the beautiful part of wrestling and like what we do is that no matter how good or how high up on that mountain you get, the challenges don't stop. There's always room to evolve and to continue to create and be better. So um, I definitely feel like I'm, I'm tapping into that and I'm getting to do that here. Impact. Well, also, and you're getting to do a lot of things that are outside of wrestling that maybe before you just didn't have the chance to pursue. How fulfilling has that been? Having that that year break just really put things like something like clicked and, and like re channeled in my brain because you realize like it could all be done just like that. And we put so much into just this. If you don't have that, then then what? And I was kind of I felt that and it, it, it scared me. So. Um, you know, I promised myself that I'm not gonna limit myself. I'm not gonna be afraid to step out, take chances. And it's okay if I fail because I don't wanna look back later in life and say, I wish I would've did that. I wish I would've tried modeling. I wish I would've pursued singing. I wish I would've pursued Broadway. Like, this time we do not get back. It, it just awakened a whole new drive and determination in me. I'm gonna do as many things that I feel are conducive to my my life and my dreams and my happiness and my success as I can and not not let my insecurities of failure um, limit me or stop me. Like nothing is stopping me but myself. And then I just realized how just timid I had been with that in my career. So now that I'm here, you you're starting to see me do more outside things because I'm just I, re I refuse to not because of fear. You're capable of far more than I think you've even realized yet. And so far here in Impact, you've been unstoppable. Uh, this Saturday, July 15th in Windsor, Ontario, Slammiversary is one of our biggest events of the year. You've had the chance to compete on live Impact broadcasts, but this is different. This is Slammiversary. How are you handling this pressure, especially going into a Knockouts World Title match against Deanna Peraza? Just training, being prepared, and the more I train and the more I prepare myself, I feel like the less anxious and nervous I'll be on that day. Like there's nothing you could do about that, but I think a part of that is just me staying up on my game and on that day just being the best. It's not just about being the best, but it's about me feeling and knowing like I am being my best. I am at my best. Like not so much about being the best, because you're, you, you're comparing yourself to, to others and that is the standard. That's not as important to me as it is for me to know that I am at my best and I'm doing everything I can to be my best and to be Trinity because no one else is that.